Hi guys, this is going to be a contest entry for Postnet Burger, who reached 250 subs and is holding a contest that ends today. And as I usually am, one of the last Mohegans, I wanted to get my video in to show my support for this guy. Um, if anyone doesn't know Postnet Burger, he's definitely one of the most knowledgeable people about film that I've seen on YouTube. I mean, he knows, and he has like a wide genre of films that he talks about. It's not just horror or action or drama. It's it's everything. He can he can talk horror slashers all the way to Oscar award winners to silver screen classics. I mean, he really knows it all. And uh, his updates uh, are some of my favorite videos to watch because he, he gets a lot of cool stuff that really no one else is buying. A lot of Kino stuff, um, some Criterion, some Scream Factory, uh, he, he just, he gets like a wide assortment, is my point, of, of films. Not It's not just, you know, slasher after slasher or whatever. I mean, you see stuff, musicals you see on his channel, and you see a lot of different types of things. So, basically, um, in his question, he wanted to know your top five films, uh, but he wanted you to sort of, I think... If I understood the um, the rules of the contest, he wanted you to break it up a little bit, genres, and not just stick to one genre. I could be wrong with that. He could have just meant, don't feel like yeah, just keep it at horror. You can move around. So I I kind of like switched the genres around here and picked one from each. Or um, <clears throat> that's that sort of thing. Hold on one second. I'm trying to take a drink from a friggin' bottle. With the cap still on. Ugh. Excuse me for that. I don't know what it is. My voice tends to like get dry and I don't know, maybe it's just the weather. <clears throat> Allergies. So, anyway, number five, I am picking Friday the 13th Part 3, which seems like a weird choice to a lot of people, I'm sure. I absolutely love this movie. Um, everything from the 3D aspect of it to the first appearance of Jason, to the kills that are in this one, the music. I mean, this one really has it all for me. I love the original Friday the 13th. I watch it all the time. I love all the sequels. Even, I'm getting I'm getting soft spots even for part eight in Jason X, and that's how much I love this franchise. Um, but if I had to pick one, this probably would be my favorite of the movies. Uh, it just it just has it all for me. I love all the characters that are in it. You know, it, it just it, it's got like a mixture of genres in here. You know, you got you got that gang with the chains and everything. That it, they got like these side stories in it. Then you got like the stoners in there, and you got um, uh, what's his name? The I, I forget now. Uh, Shel Shelley. You got Shelley in there. It just, it, it just, it just, a, and I, I really loved the J, the guy who played Jason in this. It was, was this, uh, Brooker? I forget. But, um, yeah, this, this is just an amazing movie. And, uh, you know, I wanted to, I kept going back, but they had Halloween, the Halloween laser disc in my hand. Uh, I had Nightmare on Elm Street. I mean, it's really interchangeable. I could have picked any of those or this one. I went with this one because... You know, I, I'm probably because I haven't seen this one in a while. Like I looked at it and said, "Oh, I gotta watch this again." I mean, it's just it's just amazing. So that's gonna be my number five pick. I'm gonna switch it over to drama for a second, and I picked Rocky. And uh, the reason I picked this one is because it just has an amazing um, message in it. You know, and when I first saw this film when I was really young on TV, I believe, it, you know. I was a little disappointed in the ending of this one, you know, because of, um, well, I, I, don't, I don't know if, I don't want to spoil anything, but the, the, I was disappointed in the ending, but I, I've learned to love the ending of this one because I, I think the more important story of this, I mean, it, you have the relationship of, of you know, this guy in the movie, Rocky in the beginning of the movie, he starts out as kind of like a bum, you know, he has no education. He has no really job skills, you know. He can't read. He he's working as like a, a guy breaking breaking thumbs for. Um, I, I'm I'm drawing a blank on the guy's name now. The guy that was a maniac, 
But, um, you know, he really has no future. He's, he even, I think he lost the match, I think, in the beginning of this movie to, like, a, a, no, a, a no-name guy. You know, then he meets, he meets Adrian, falls in love with her. And then, you know, the most, the most incredible thing happens to him. You know, the, the heavyweight champion of the world has a match against um, a contender, a legitimate contender that falls through because the guy gets sick or breaks a rib or does something. And he, Apollo Creed picks Rocky's name uh, out of, you know, out of nowhere just to fight him because he likes the name Italian Stallion. He thinks he can make a, a, a good match with it. A show, you, you know, he's a, Apollo Creed was a showman. And, uh, and, you know, it shows Rocky's struggle with this gift that he's been given that he doesn't deserve it. And, you know, because he's thinking of himself as a loser and who is he? He's going to get knocked out. He, he doesn't want to be a joke. He doesn't want to be laughed at. But then he becomes, a, after talking to Adrian and friends and stuff, he starts looking at it as a great opportunity and he's going to make the most of this opportunity. You don't get many opportunities in life, but when you get one, you know, as Rocky shows in this movie, you go all out and you give it everything you have. And, uh, you know, that's really what the core of this movie is about is, you know, if you get, if, if ever in your life you get a great opportunity, just, just take it, just, just snag it and make the most, most of it you can because they don't come, you know, a lot of great opportunities don't come around very often and, and you don't want to waste them. So that's, you know, this movie is just fantastic. I mean, every time it's on TV, it just, it'll capture you in, and the music in it, everything is just perfect. And you know, one thing I'm really upset about with this, with 1976, which is the year this came out, is it did not, I think it was in contention to win an Oscar. And I believe, if I'm correct, I'm sure, I know Parsnip will, will know this. I believe it lost to Annie Hall. I've never seen Annie Hall. Don't know anything about it. I, I'm sure it is a good movie because it was in contention for the Oscars. But did Annie Hall deserve to win the Oscar over this? I never hear anybody in the movie community be talking about Annie Hall. No one. But everyone talks about Rocky. I'd love to hear someone who, who liked Annie Hall just say, yeah, dude, it, it really did deserve to win over Rocky. It was, you know, it was an amazing movie. Just someone tell me. Because <laughs> I haven't seen Annie Hall. And it kills me that this lost. Um, next one is more of a science fiction. I guess I'd put this one in. And... Of course, RoboCop. This started my love with Pete, uh, with films of uh, Paul Verhoeven. I was going to call him Peter Verhoeven. Paul Verhoeven. Oh, th th he was my favorite director in the 90s. This guy was pumping out hit after hit after hit. RoboCop, Total Recall. Um, what was it? What was, oh, I'm try now I'm drawing blanks on him. Starship Troopers, Basic Instinct. Did I already say that one? Uh, but the run, I think was he I think he was the running man too. He he just had amazing films. I even like Showgirls. Uh, I don't know what happened to him. I guess maybe he maybe his age caught up with him, or uh, I know it was rumored he had a drug problem. Maybe that kind of caught up with him. But he was just pumping out all these hits, and he was the it director for a while in Hollywood. This movie, you know, I remember just hearing about it you know a cop that's like this super powered robot that is going to go around and clean up a town you know i i just absolutely loved it i mean the violence that's in this here the action all the concepts i love ed 209 who's in this i love the soundtrack you know there's really not much i don't like about robocop and uh you know i wish i would get a robot i would get a, a blu-ray release on from Criterion, like they did in, in the Laserdisc era, but I don't think that's going to happen. But um, yeah, I mean, it just, I can't really say, there's not much more to say about Robocop. It's just an amazing movie and I love it. Um, I'm going to hold off on this one. I meant to have something. I didn't have the Laserdisc of it, so I picked something else. This is my number one. My number two is going to be Back to the Future, which I have in this Blu ray box set. Now, Back to the Future is. Uh, is a trilogy that is very near and dear to my heart. Uh, I could watch these movies every week, honestly. Um, just the chemistry everyone has on set. I think the writing was great. The script, the screenplay was great. The soundtrack was great. 
the like I already said the performances just apps the directing everything was great um and it's something that I think as I know a lot of people hate like reboots and everything I would actually be down for or like a reimagining of this or not where they replace the characters I think I think you have to leave the characters the way they are because they're so um beloved I guess by the audience but I could see them like I wish they'd just hand the time machine down to like Marty's son or daughter or or you know maybe in the beginning of the movie or something leave leave the time machine in the future somewhere and then have a new cast of characters take it over that um come across it and do something with it because I mean I think this is a franchise that doesn't deserve to die after three movies I think it needs to live on like the Star Wars movies are, are living on now with J.J. Abrams in the new the new set of films that are coming out you know I think there's a lot of untapped potential in this series but um that's another topic but I love all three of these it would be hard to pick one but if I did I'd have to pick the original I just think it it, it had the best story and uh best acting and uh you know it's just it's just everyone knows this movie I don't need to talk about it it's just an amazing film all around and that's why I'm picking it as my number two so my number one I could go with just about any any film in the series I mean they're all you know really close to my heart and they're not far away from each other it's not like there's a huge gap between films I'd probably say The Empire Strikes Back is the best movie in this series but I, I get in this one I was picking I was picking my films that I could watch anytime and um, this one here it just has a whole it has a lot of memories for me with this one and when you think about it, like just the, the status that Darth Vader had throughout the first trilogy how it seemed like he was just an unbeatable type um, of villain and you're worried for Luke if he can really stand up against him and then you find out you know what you find out in part two and it makes it an even harder fight for him to go up against him and then the introduction or um, I shouldn't say the introduction because of the Emperor but the more screen time of the Emperor and, and that villain I mean it just it was an all-around unbelievable and awesome film and I, I just have memories of seeing this one um, when I was young I remember my grandfather taking me and my younger sister to see this and we waited in line uh, on opening weekend out the it was the, the line was out the door to get tickets in the rain we all had everyone in the line had us. we waited an hour and a half in the rain outside the, the, the line was around the theater to get in through the doors to buy your tickets just to find out that the, the time had sold out um, that we were waiting for and I think I think the entire um, day had sold out if I remember correctly and I think we had to go we had to get tickets and go back then at the following day like on a Sunday or something to see it because it was just so you know every it was sold out the theater, the movie was sold out everywhere there was no chance of getting into it at any time on opening weekend and then some cocksucker spoiled the movie while we were waiting out in line. I guess the movie had just finished playing and someone came out and said a spoiler, a huge spoiler in the movie. And the whole crowd was just like, ah. Oh! But still, I mean, it didn't make take anything away from the movie because I still love seeing it the following day. And, uh, you know, I, I, this is one I could go back and watch. like Just like Back to the Future, I could watch just one weekly and not get bored with it. It's just... An amazing film and I there was so much more I wanted to say about the Star Wars trilogy but this video is getting way too long and I'm gonna save that for another video so parsing up I hope this does it for you you know congratulations again on 250 subs I'm gonna throw you a link in my description box down below um, also um, I find out that people th th drop a comment on my video to say uh, just say anything like good video or something because I noticed that when you give people shout outs People are more inclined, like when they're in the comment section, to click on your your avatar or something to go to your page, than clicking on the um, links in the description, because they see you know whatever they see your picture or whatever um, avatar, or it's easier for them. So definitely do that, and I'm gonna you know link this on your 
with your original contest video. Sorry I waited so late, guys. Hopefully uh, everyone found this a little bit entertaining. But those are my five films that I have picked uh, for this contest. So take care, guys.